Hello everyone and welcome to another video from Vimo. My name is Eki, call sign Delta Foxtrot 4 Oscar Romeo and today I'm talking about the new handheld radio from Kenwood, the THD 75. I'm sure many people are familiar with its predecessor, the THD 74. It was discontinued very surprisingly. One of the reasons for this, and not the only one, was the fire in a Japanese chip factory owned by AKM. AKM is one of the few manufacturers that produce a certain type of audio chip and digital to analog converters which were used in this device but also in the automotive industry in car radios. And obviously, uh, as the market became even tighter due to the fire at the company, they put so much money on the table that Kenwood couldn't or didn't want to bid anymore. And then they said, okay, not then. Then they could no longer manufacture the device because they didn't have this chip anymore. And then they discontinued the device. We were all very sad and thought it was a bit of a shame. And then just as surprisingly, they announced that the THD 75E would continue. The similarity of these two devices suggests, and I beg to differ, this is speculation that Kenwood had so many parts left over for the THD 74 that remained the same, such as the display, certain housing parts, the keyboard, in other words, a few special parts, that they said, okay, let's redesign the circuit board with a different chip and redesign the whole thing, expand the software a bit, add USB-C, and then we have a new device. And that's exactly what happened. What? Briefly about the device itself. The THD 75E is a dual band device, two meters and 70 centimeters. You can listen to both bands simultaneously, two separate receivers. However, it is not fully duplex capable. This means that I cannot transmit on one band and listen on the other band at the same time. Unfortunately, this makes it less suitable for FM satellite operation than the THD 72. The radio has APRS integrated analog packet radio. There's a GPS antenna up here. As with the predecessor, of course, it does D-Star, which is the only product that does D-Star that doesn't come from ICOM. The display is the same as its predecessor in terms of resolution. It is a color display, so a few details have changed a little. However, the overall display has remained the same. The entire keyboard, as you can see right here, has also remained the same from the predecessor. Apart from the display and a few minor cosmetic changes, the device differs from its predecessor in two functional respects. One is the digital repeater function or digipeater function. I can now set up a packet radio digipeater and the other is that I can receive D-Star on both bands at the same time. So I now have twice the possibility of receiving a D-Star relay or something like that on two frequencies at the same time. There is only one thing I have forgotten which is also new, and that is the USB-C socket. The previous device had a USB micro socket. I can also charge the device via the socket. Let's take a quick look at the differences. So these are very similar cases. This is the new one, the THD 75 on the right, THD 74 on the left. The THD 74 on the left has slightly rounder corners and is structured a little differently at the front. And this rocker button is structured a little differently, but in terms of layout and so on, everything is completely identical. And here are the displays. The displays are absolutely identical between the two devices in terms of the technical specifications. Everything else is really the same, even when you switch to the menu. This is what it looks like from the side. And here is the only real difference. This is the THD 74 with the... And the THD 75 has the newer USB-C connection. Here again, the THD 74 on the left with the micro USB port. And here the THD 75 with the USB-C port. Everything else, DC input, SD card slot, and so on is the same. There's one here, but not here. Before I started the video, I asked around on social media to see what kind of questions there were. And there were quite a few. I'll have to take a look at my notes here. Some people had asked how the receiver was performing on shortwave. Well, I have connected it here. This is the antenna comparison with the IC7300. The antenna goes to both devices via a 3 dB splitter. So both devices have the same antenna on them. And as you can see, it's very loud. I'm decoding FT8 here with the USB cable direct to the computer and can read it perfectly. FT8 decodes quite outstandingly. Even the cat control works. Here I have now gone to 20 meters. The antenna is still the 10 meter dipole, so it's not so great. You can see that here too. 
There aren't quite as many signals to be seen here. Still sounds good. Still a very loud signal here, so really very loud. Good to decode FT8 with WSJTX. Here on to 30 meters. What we are hearing is the German weather service. Very loud to receive, of course. Still with the completely mismatched 10 meter antenna, but enough to hear. Still very strong reception here too, even though the attenuator is on. And as you can see, it can also be recorded perfectly with FL Digi. I have now set up a test here. I connected the old THD 74 and the THD 75 together to the same shortwave antenna. Again, using a 3 dB splitter to see which one is more sensitive. And it does indeed look as if the newer one, the THD 75, is significantly more sensitive. I can understand both stations well on both devices, but here the signal is much more pronounced and the intelligibility is also better. I have the impression that it also has a better loudspeaker. Now another test on shortwave. This is Volmet again, now next THD75. Now the THD74. Another short test on medium wave, this is Volmet radio service. The same antenna again on both radios. For sure not a good antenna, just a piece of wire over a 3 dB splitter. THD 75 works well. THD 74 also works, so I don't see any difference now. They both seem to be the same on medium wave. Shortwave receiver, I have shown what is possible. I think it's quite impressive. Uh, and for me, if I don't want to take anything else with you on vacation, it would be a good substitute to at least be able to listen in. A piece of wire on it, maybe not even too big, thrown somewhere in the tree will work just fine. One more word on this. How do I transfer data from THD 74 to THD 75? Unfortunately, it doesn't work with the SD card. That disappointed me a bit, but well, okay. Um, so there is a completely parallel data structure. One folder is called THD74, the other is called THD75. And even if I copy the data from one to the other, it still doesn't work because the extension is also called THD74. So I thought I'd be particularly clever and change it to THD75, but no, that doesn't work either. Obviously the file contains the device from which the file was written, and then it can't be copied over. Too bad. But it works with the free MCP75 program, which has an import function for the data backed up with the MCP74. So that's how I moved all my memories over and all the settings that were necessary. I think I had to adjust a few settings manually with APS, but I was able to move most of it over so easily. That was quite practical. A lot of uh, questions come up about Bluetooth, the Bluetooth functions. I'll show you here how to pair with a headset like this. Uh, it's actually quite good. I've got a headset here now, a professional Bluetooth headset for the phone, and you can also connect it. Now I set my headset to pairing mode. Power on, battery high. Pairing. Pairing successful. Incoming call. Answering call. 
So now it's connected. Now we go to the other menu, turn on the Vox. Out again. Test one, two, three. There it goes on air. Test here is Delta Foxtrot 4 Oscar Romeo test. Can the device also use Bluetooth low energy? Unfortunately not. Even Apple is unfortunately doesn't support, as far as I know, Vox to Bluetooth. Yes, that works. Sound via Bluetooth to a computer? Unfortunately not. That didn't work out so well. Uh, even pairing with the car radio worked. I have a 2015 Volkswagen, nothing special, relatively simple Bluetooth radio in there, and the pairing worked right away. It sounds in the car radio as if there's an incoming call. I answer it and I can talk to the device via the car's hands-free system. Pairing several devices, yes, works. I have demonstrated it, even in the car. Two real VFOs? Yes, it can, of course. One on each band. Full duplex, as I mentioned earlier, is unfortunately not possible. Weight exactly the same as its predecessor, 320 grams. Charging via USB-C possible? Yes, it is. Sure, of course. I measured that earlier. That's about 5 watts that the device draws, and that charges the standard battery for about 3 hours. Someone asked whether the airband can also be received with it. As we are not allowed to receive it in Germany, I cannot demonstrate this. But yes, the tapes are included. I'm currently switching through all the possible bands. Short wave, medium wave, 70 centimeters. There's even the air band in the 300 megahertz range, the military band. But as I said, we are not allowed to listen in Germany. Please pay attention to what is legally possible in your country. Another question was about battery life in real life. I've only had the device for four days now, so I can't answer that exactly, but it lasts quite a long time. This is the standard battery, the KNW 75L, and I've always done all the demonstrations without battery saving modes, simply to avoid the screen going out in the middle, so I've turned all these energy saving things down relatively low, and I've always used a lot of things and left the device on for hours. And it's really been on constantly for eight hours or so now, and no problem. So it works wonderfully. There was a question about the voice guidance function for the visually impaired. In other words, the option of having the menu control output via voice output. I'll show you that. So you can generally switch it on and off here, and then add various options, whether the call sign should also be called, and so on. I'll show you that. So this is very practical with this number of the menu item. Then you always know where you are, even if you can still hear it via this voice announcement. Question I left out earlier, which also came up quite frequently. Why is the device so expensive? It currently costs just over 800 euros at Vimo. That's certainly a lot of money. Absolutely, it's the most expensive handheld radio you can buy at the moment. Is it worth it? Everyone has to decide for themselves. It was worth it for me. I bought it. I think Kenwood is absolutely unbeatable for mobile devices, especially because of its APRS capabilities. I have a TMD 710 in my car, and since I really enjoy APRS, there was simply no question for me, of course. The new features that have been added are really minimal. You can argue for a long time about whether they are worth the money, maybe an eternal discussion. It has also become a bit more expensive. But apart from that, everything has become more expensive. Do you have to have it? As I said, please answer that yourself. I am fully aware that not everyone can afford it, especially not when you see that there are devices for 20 euros or so that also do dual band. There are devices that do APRS for 200 euros. Well, okay. Sometimes you want to fulfill a nice wish or simply a caprice. For me, it was my retirement wish. I am now retired. It's a really nice present for me that I'll really enjoy. And I think the features that the device comes with are something that will really keep me busy on the radio shack, vacation trip, or wherever I am on a hike. And as I said, will be a lot of fun to play with it. That should be the conclusion, or at least my conclusion. I think the device is excellent, no doubt about that. I personally really enjoy it and will be happy to recommend it to others. 
I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If so, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so you'll always know when Vimo releases something new. On that note, have a nice day. Bye-bye.